get him. How hard did he hit? Very hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't feel the punches because I was so blacked out. I could never see him or feel him, but I could hear him. <laughs> you <laughs> hit. Pop, 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 pop. How important do you think it was? Did your upbringing lead to your boxing career? Do you think the way you grew up? I, I, I do, yes. Were you poor? Well, yes. Yeah, well, my mama said I wasn't. She said she was. And she said, you know, but if you don't make the same mistake, you won't be poor. And so, but I was young as a, I was young as a nine, and you know, I got tore up by everybody. My my first goal was to be better than my brothers and sisters because they beat me and everything. So you know, I, I you know, I had that fire in me because I had to dodge them backhand my mama always threw, and I had to get them hands up. You grew up a lot tough, huh? Yeah. Um... How would you describe your neighborhood? It's really um, drug infested, um, violence infested, um, crime infested, just um, a big cesspool most of the time. When did you want to be a fighter? I never thought about being a fighter until I was in, um, I was in a detention school. And um, a gentleman by the name of Bobby Stewart would box with the kids if they behaved well and got on the level and they could blow up some steam. And then he started showing me how to box. I never had a pair of boxing gloves on in my life, or probably 12, 13. I never had a pair of boxing gloves on in my life. And um, he said, you can do this. If you, since I started training with him, and then he took me to custom model, and he said, if you could change your life, and, and not to go back to the air, and that was really... Had he lived, your life would have been better. I don't know. If my life is really cool now. But you know, things happen for a reason. You can't never say what this guy, because then you're doubting God, because everything, nothing happens by a call. You still believe in God? Huh? You believe in God? I believe in God. I wonder if God believe in me, but I believe in God. You always believe in God, right? Well, yes. Did you like hitting people? I like winning. And if that came to hitting people, knocking them out, yeah, well, I loved it. Did you like your opponents? Um, no, they, they didn't exist in my mind. Their feelings and stuff didn't exist in my mind, no. Till the ring fight was over. But other than that, um... Ali told me that despite all his poems and everything, that guy wanted to hit him. And he was not afraid. He was concerned. Were you concerned about getting hit? Well, I knew I was going to get hit. I wasn't a good defensive guy. But I realized I could hit him back. Were you concerned about getting hit? Not really. I didn't get hit much in fighting. You know, if you really, if you count, I didn't get hit um, as much as um, most of you. I count up all the heavyweights that I ever fought, I probably got hit the less. Even though you were a straight walk-in? I had a pretty decent defense, you know. So um, I didn't really get hit that much. I was a short guy. Most guys had to punch down. So um, I did pretty, I was pretty good um, in that department. Did you call him a counterpuncher? Well, or a counter biter. Well, I, I was a, Mike, watch, Mike, watch. Mike, Mike was, Mike was like a rattlesnake. A rattlesnake. Yeah, but he was like, he he had a diss and looked like he couldn't get you, and he get you, like that, and so that was always. I'm get you. I, I'm I'm afraid to get out of here. Is boxing a one man? Is Floyd Mayweather boxing now? Well, um, yeah, you would have to say that. He is. What's happened to the game? I don't know. There's um. The game has changed a lot. The game has changed a lot. Fighters are not as exciting as they used to be. Fighters, the best fighters are not fighting the best fighters. Everybody avoiding one another. Floyd Mayweather is the smart, is a fighting businessman. Um, he picks his fights, which is a smart thing to do. And um, you respect him? Well, a lot. I, I think his, his training, the, the way he trained, and, and he take care of the body. I just believe that anybody that take care of their body gonna have a Long go. What happened to the heavyweight division? I don't know. I'm not in it. I know, but w w w there's no great heavyweights fighting? Well, the, he the Klitschko's are pretty good. They're winning in the fights. We just don't like them because they're not American heavyweights. They don't fight like we're accustomed to. They don't take chances. But they're winning fights. They're close to, they're close to Larry Holmes and Joe Luz as far as title defenses are concerned. But they're just not what we consider the heavyweight guys. They're not in there slugging it out, risking, taking chance, and making exciting fights. You agree? Well, I, I, I just think that I mean, the boxing shows that every so often it, it, it dies for its heavyweight. For its heavyweight. And it's the little guys that always turn it up. You know, I just you know when after Ali, it didn't come back to Mike. 
Might what do you make of these kickboxing fighters? The MM, what do you make of that? Hey, listen, um, that's good stuff too. And there's enough room for boxing and MMA. You know, it's just that um, the boxers right now are not stepping up to the plate. MMA is bringing so much, uh, so many other dynamics to, to the table. They're bringing the entertainment factor there with the boxing. Louis Louis, how did you go from Louis Louis, the global village champion? In, in the 60s and 70s, I was in the music business. I went into sports management in the 80s and got involved in a we, the we Are the World project on the philanthropic side. And it became really, really addictive feeding kids in Ethiopia. And one of my best friends was Muhammad Ali. And I told Ali one day we're going to feed kids together. I ended up in the food business in 1990 and got Muhammad as my spokesperson. And we started feeding kids. And I told Muhammad that in 20 years we're going to feed 1 billion children. And to date, we're at 956 million documented mills without donations. And have you enlisted these two? Um, Evander became our, our goodwill ambassador. Um, Muhammad's health started failing, as you know, Larry. Yeah. And two years ago, we took Asia off the map for him and appointed Manny Pacquiao as our Asian goodwill ambassador. And last year, Ali and I had a meeting and had to pick a, a new goodwill ambassador. And it was Evander. And, and Evander, Evander gotten, brought in Mike. And he brought, you brought him in? Yep. So what did you think when Evander called you and said, I want you to get involved in this project? Well, it's not like I was doing anything, of course, you know. I used to say, hey, um, yeah, okay, good. We're going to feed some people. And as bad as I'm doing now, you know, I may be a recipient, a recipient of some of this food that they're giving it's away. This is so, vegetarian, right? Yeah, tell me about it. Shoot. So how God. does it work? How, do people, how does the hunger, how does it work? How, do you how it works is, is um, I'm Canadian. I became an offshore resident of the Bahamas, and I made a deal with the big guy that whatever I would pay in tax, we're a very successful company. We're in 57 countries. I said I would give to children. So I've been the, I've been writing the checks for but 19 years. How does years. it go? How does it? How does the? We food... we have we have champions in every country. Um, it started with uh, Muhammad, Gary U.S. Bonds, the rock and roll singer. My wife Yvette, um, then Celine Dion came in, another another Montrealer, and champions started coming in from everywhere, offering their services to distribute food. And then in, in 1993, uh, we went to the Ivory Coast. We got a call from Jimmy Carter that a Catholic nun by the name of Sister Beltran from Conyers, Georgia, was stranded in the Ivory Coast with 480 amputee children. Could we help her? She had no food. I called Ali. We flew over, and all the press were there. And we'd already fed maybe 10 or 15 million kids below the radar. And they said, what's the name of your organization? We didn't even have a bank account. We had no name. I said, um, Global Village. And Ali went, champions. <laughs> and that's, that's how it started in 1993. Wow. You must be very proud to be a member of Evander. You're the guy now, right? Yeah, I'm honored. Evander just came back from, he just fed over 1.2 million homeless in England for 33 days. And he was in the Philippines with myself and Manny Pacquiao. We fed 2.5 million there. And he's going to Bulgaria with me to release another 18, Bulga 18 refugee families from the camps. Isn't it a great reward to help people? It, it is, but I guess the main part, me, me coming up as a kid, is more, if I didn't get in the help, I wouldn't be who I am. So it's easy for me to give back. How do people help? How they could help before was just as volunteers. Now we're going into uncharted waters, Larry. We're, 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 we're in the freeing refugee business, which is a tough business. It's never been done. I've managed to convince the country of Bulgaria to allow us to have refugees brought out of the camps after they're screened and become residents of the EU. We're paying the entire tab. It's the first time we're asking people to go to our website and make a contribution. We have What's never accepted. It's gogvc.com or global, um, globalvillagechampions.org, www50 And when families. is Mike going to start going? My, Mike's, Mike's doing a thing for us. In, we have a thing that we started last year called the Christmas in January. We started in Phoenix, Arizona with Muhammad Ali. And Mike's going to head up our, our Christmas in January in Las Vegas with the Boxing Hall of Fame. And then hopefully whenever he's available, he'll be a phenomenal asset to come on some of the trips with us. Especially, I've just been invited to see Mr. Rasad since the noise oh. we've been making in, 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 in Bulgaria. And we'd love to have Mike on that trip. That's going to be, um, be a neat trick for them to get me down there. Why? I don't know. That's pretty scary down there, huh? Mike. I'm only playing. Okay? <laughs> you're Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah, you're scared. Hey, uh, I'm just here to help.